Hey coaches, this is uh, Coach Parker with CoachParker.org. How are you guys doing today? Hey, today I thought I would go over the Power Wing Beast Offense uh, Youth Football Playbook. Uh, I published that back in, uh, looks like 2017 in July. And uh, uh, it's been a great uh, playbook for me since 2010. And I know a lot of folks... Uh, have been uh, winning and being very successful with the information in the book. So just kind of wanted to, to go back through kind of a thumb through the book for some of those folks that haven't really seen it before or heard about it and uh, kind of do that whole process. So this is kind of a walkthrough, the Power Wing Beast Offense Youth Football Playbook by Coach Parker. Hey, if you haven't got a chance to subscribe, please do so. Uh, hit the button, the notify button below, and make sure uh, you comment, like, or whatever after the video. But if you get a chance, please subscribe. It helps the channel uh, make more free youth football content uh, to bring to the youth football uh, coaching community. I'd really appreciate that. helps us out a ton. So... Uh, let's jump in right now to the book. So here's the table of content, introduction, kind of what the Power Wing Beast offense is. Uh, it is a multiple formation offense. There's six formations, uh, kind of goal strategy, what the formations are, the strength and weaknesses of those, kind of plays and formations by age group, which is kind of good that will help you progress through. What I look for in player profiles, kind of a quick installation process, what I call my base eight plays, which I think uh, others like Caesar calls his sainted six. I have what I call base eight. Uh, I've got a whole chapter on blocking and pulling, which is uh, actually sold now uh, in a book called Jaws. Um, I've got play calling strategies, then all the plays, audibles, which is a nice little couple of pages on what I do to call audibles, plus there's some videos out there. Uh, scouting, play call sheet, uh, and then there's a bibliography of resources that I use that uh, have helped me over the years as a youth football coach. And uh, just wanted to make sure everybody was sourced there and uh, given credit where that's due. So that's the table of contents there. And then, you know, you get that in the book. And then also, you know, people that buy my, uh, my playbooks, uh, they've got my email, they can uh, Facebook me, there's a private Facebook group for the purchasers of the book, uh, and if you guys haven't found that now and you've purchased the book, just let me know, it's kind of a new thing this year. Uh, so I'm I'm more than happy to talk to folks that have purchased the book and go into detail, but uh, so that's the table of contents. Let's look over at coachparker.org and see what some folks uh, so here, real quick, before we get into what folks have said about, this is where you can buy the book over at Coach Parker. Uh, this talks about what's in the book. And then there's 200 pages at 60 plays. Uh, there's also a print version of it. I think I have 25 copies left. And then there's all these videos. That's the thing. I do videos, and there's a lot of examples of that out there. So you can use the book and go to those videos. And then uh, where was the testimonials here? Oh, yeah. So first year using the, the system, they won their uh, championship in 2017. The other guys won their Super Bowl. So you can see a lot of folks have been winning. And, and it's gotten very popular over the last four years. There's a lot of coaches now drawing up their own playbooks and talking about the uh, beast offense that weren't doing that about five years ago. So... I think just by the popularity of, of me posting everything, people have become more aware of what the beast is and how it works. And uh, that's very flattering because, uh, you know, seven years ago, very few people outside of maybe single wing groups knew what the beast was. So let's go to the next slide. Looks like 21 here. Uh, yeah, and here's some formations. Uh, there's the single wing beast, which, uh, there's some sub formations there, tight, worm, jumbo, and fat are kind of the main ones with plays drawn out in the book. And then there's the eye formation, uh, and then, uh, the eye wing, 
which is spy, pie, and angle, and trig are kind of drawn out. And then the double wing speed uh, is really drawn out. But it gives you some other formations there to look at uh, some of the things that I've done uh, with those. And let's go to 22. And here are the, ba the main uh, power wing beast offense, beast formate, or the, the, here's all the six, the main six formations here. Uh, that I run now in beast formation I've got an under center which I call buck or ape but he's also in shotgun um, if you read a lot of my website and stuff but for the true tight beast uh, I usually have the beast back under center uh, especially at younger ages because I don't want fumbles from the snap let's go to 24 here uh, here's some other variations you can see in worm uh, the beast back comes back into shotgun because we're gonna we're gonna wind up sweeping and passing more out of this. But uh, like I said, you can go uh, into shotgun with this. I do that for a couple of counters and other things, but uh, it's up for you. Uh, beast fat is actually uh, I call it cake two and box. It's a Notre Dame box formation. Bruce Ein ran fat, and I'd been calling mine cake because. This, this fat cake formation came out of my pie formation. Uh, and I ran this back in 2008, uh, the Notre Dame box. Uh, but I started naming it fat because a lot of people were calling this fat. But uh, you'll hear me reference fat, box, cake. Uh, love that formation. That might be as, uh, uh, as powerful as the actual uh, traditional beast. Uh, this wall formation, I don't run it much, but a friend of mine does. The bunch definitely works. And in my Wildcat book, you'll see I've gone into some crazy bunch formations there. That jumbo formation works great for passing out of. Uh, let's see what here we got. Uh, is this 24? I think we're going to 26. And here's I formation. So here's the eye wing, which I call spy or eye, but right now it's spy. Pi, this is the formation that uh, one of the coaches uh, in uh, Keller here was running, and I kind of turned it into more of a power wing than what he was running it. And this is how Kate came out of that, or fat, uh, is I just moved that quarterback back into a beast back here, and then we come into fat cake here's angle which is offset i i, re, I rename if you're wondering why i rename these is they're short names you see the three or four lit letters uh so i get them on wrist coaches that's what's going on there uh let's see 28 this is the double wing variation uh i you know love the double wing uh jerry volaton the toss uh, Dale Wiener out of the spin offense, uh, Jack Gregory, Wyatt. Uh, there's a lot of guys uh, that run this double wing, and this is kind of my take on it. Uh, the Mainly the speed formation is what's in the book, but here's some other stuff that we've done. In my Wildcat book, I do go into some of these spread things here and run a lot of... Uh, spread uh kind of single wing wildcat from this but uh but yeah that's the double wing kind of stuff there uh let's go over here and um uh, just talking about the beast i used to call the beast and we go we can go back to the beast which i think was at 22 or uh, let's see so i used to call beast a loud rowdy monkey for left right middle and I found that formation, if people are wondering, on uh, Playmaker Football Software for the Macintosh way back in 1993, 4 or 5, I believe, when I was coaching in Plano, Texas. And uh, in 2005, my uh, oldest son then started playing football. And uh, when I was drawing up the, fo the football plays, then around 2008... I saw that a lot of people like Gregory and Wyatt were calling this Yale single wing, which is what the beast is. They were calling it beast. And so since I never had a real term for it uh, and didn't even know at the time it was a Yale single wing, I just kind of changed my naming over to beast. 
But you'll see me call it in older playbooks, or you'll see it out there, loud, rowdy, monkey, which means left, right, and uh, that kind of thing. So, But Coach Collendod, from what I understand, Steve Collenday, uh, uh from dumbcoach.com, or used to be, uh, actually termed the word beast, I think, back in 2001. So just wanted to give him some credit there. Uh, and not sure where he got it from, but uh, but yeah, he started running it. And it's 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 funny because a lot of us uh, kind of started running this, and those that do really believe in it. So, uh, but I was running it back in 1994 in Plano, Texas, with a bunch of youth football players, and then hard and heavy in 2006 again with my uh, uh, oldest son, who was uh, seven at the time. So let's go back to, uh, let's see, 47. So that's a little bit more on the beast and where it came from. So my progression install is usually the beast type because it's so simple. That's the thing about the beast. It's very simple. There's no handoffs or very many. Uh, and so it's really easy for younger teams to run it uh, and teams to rotate backs into the beast back and keep everybody uh I, I, you know, uh, not so tired because you can rotate your backs through there. And it's just very simple. Uh, and then beast wide, which is, you know, you take the three backs and you widen them out. And jumbo basically is double wide. So it's very simple to learn the tight, the wide, the jumbo. You know, you're going three backs that are over the tackle, tackle end. And then the wide, they just go outside the end and still are together. And then the double wide jumbo. Uh, they they're outside the end and then they just spread out equal distance about 12 yards and then there's fat pie there that are sort of single wingish fat is the shotgun version of pie if you've got a center and this is one reason beast tight i'll run it in buck which is beast under center or ape I'll run that under center because at younger ages, I don't really trust a lot of shotgun snapping. And so that's what's going on there. And so th that's the progression that I'll have that go through. Um, and, you know, you'll see the double wing and the wide double wing, which is what I run speed, which is kind of uh, kind of spinish, single wingish, double wingish. Uh, that gets... You know, when I've got a really great backfield and older players, because uh, I don't run kind of the traditional double wing there. And then you can see spread passing concepts out of these other formations that I can move into spread with. I won't get to that. And I really haven't put that so much in this book. That's in the Wildcat book, because uh, for younger teams and rec kind of youth teams and really teams that are probably under 11 U. Passing too much will actually uh, help you lose. So uh, that's not what we want. And uh, that's happened to me. I've had some quarterbacks recently where uh, I tried to pass too much and probably should not have and probably should have ran the ball more. So that's a little bit of that. Let's see. 80. So we jumped from 46 to 65. Which I think, uh, yeah, so, you know, here's the base, my base eight plays here. I've got them here. Now you'll see them. They're they're all drawn out. But here's, we're just talking about them here in the book. And then let's see, 125. We jump over a lot. I think these are player profiles and blocking. Uh, let's see, 125. Well, let's just hit in here. Yeah, this is a lot of blocking here. Um the blocking chapter, you can see all the blocking stuff, pulling, pass blocking. So there's a lot of blocking information in there, uh, more line calls. Uh, let's see here. And then here's the first, the main play, was which I call Beast Tank. And there's a guy out on the internet that he's calling his formation Beast Tank. But tank means, you know, I'm running off tackle, basically. And I use that tank term for just about any off-tackle play, not just I'm calling it beast. But here's the beast tank play, which is the beast power lead dive play that uh, 
all these single wing guys run that the beast runs. So this is the bread and butter play that we use. And it's always good really for an average of three to five yards in a game. And it doesn't matter. I've been running this since 94. It really doesn't matter if people know you or they don't know you. If you stick to it, you'll break a couple of these. And it's so simple and easy. And uh, a lot of times, either this play or the beast wedge, when I do the combo of these two plays, will score against anybody. And I think the beast wedge, wild weasel or honey badger is here. So in combination, you know, if, you, if anybody is going to run anything beast related, there's these two plays, beast tank and the beast wedge, that you can run together as short yardage plays and really do well. I mean, I don't care what offense you're in. Uh, it, it would be amazing uh, for any any offensive team and package to put in, along with a pop pass out of it. So it just works great. And like I said, any of these beast-tight formations, you can run uh, in shotgun. Uh, and a lot of people ask me that. Uh, I just prefer beast tight under center because I want to hit the hole really quick. Uh, so that's what I've got going on there. Let's see, 129. Uh, the Texas counter, love this play. Uh, it works out great. You can see he's in shotgun now versus under center. Uh, sometimes the two back, you may want to help have him help kick out back back over there. Uh, so you've got this. This is a great counterplay. We also run a counterplay with the tight, the, the backside tight end called the Crazy Heifer. Uh, that's also good. That's not in the playbook, but uh, you guys know when you buy playbooks, they are to give you ideas and expand on, and you can really start developing kind of your own plays around those. And that's what I do. You know, I'll buy a playbook and I'm not going to use it probably 100%, but I'm going to take things that I like that are going to fit into my system and what I do. Uh, and that's what, what I do. Let's see. 132. Here's the Beast Popeye. Here's the backside tight end pass. You can go to even and an overload. So the Beast Wild Weasel, the Beast Tank, and the Beast Popeye are the three plays that I'd make sure or any short yardage uh, playbook package for any team, you could install these uh, really, really quick and easy. Let's see, 144. Uh, here's a so long play. I've been running this play forever, especially if you've got a speed back, a scat back that is like one of the top running backs in the league. Uh, when I got to KYA, when I moved back to Fort to the DFW area and came into Keller, the KYA football league, uh, there was a guy who was running uh, this wide beast jumbo stuff, uh, and he just had a really good scat quick back, and he ran zone left or right, and the and basically he had two plays, and the 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 young man would just choose his hole and go and go and uh he won several super bowls with that so uh and i know if you go into super splits with some friends of mine have done that out of denver uh they have a lot of success with that too so uh that's mike mahoney out of denver so if you're in that that area and then let's see i'm gonna go to 147 uh, oh, here's one of my favorite passes out of the jumbo formation. We won a Super Bowl on this particular pass. Great pass there. 150. Oh, the Lone Ranger. This play actually was a play that gave me trouble uh, on a defense that a uh, Dallas Cowboys uh, old uh, veteran player, he was coaching a team over in Southlake. He ran this play on me quite a bit, this slant play with this kid that was so tall and fast and uh first half we were were tied with that group uh we were in a semi game going into the championship game trying to get into the super bowl and the second half he came out with this lone ranger thing and uh similar play and really killed us uh with his speed and talent uh, let's see, 151. Oh, yeah, here you can see this on my YouTube channel. We run this trick play, which is the Statue of Liberty a lot. It actually works out great and easy to run if you've got a short quarterback and a tall tight end. 
Here is uh, the fat cake formation, uh, pie, uh, baked cake. Uh, but I started calling it fat for the playbook here because it seemed like a lot of folks uh, were you were you know running this formation. This was more of the, I guess, real term fat. But I'm not sure if that's the case. But you'll hear me refer to this formation as fat cake or box. Because it really, for us, uh, and I was looking back through playbooks, which is kind of funny, from 2006, uh, even though, you know, I I thought at the time that it, it kind of baked out a pie, but uh, in 2006 and seven we were actually running a Notre Dame box formation along with Dave Caesar's single wing. So it's kind of funny how I didn't run it, and then it kind of came back, and then I moved back to it. So it's funny how that works when you start looking back through your your notes and your old papers. Um, it's kind of funny uh, when I see kind of how the offense has evolved, and now it's continuing to evolve as I see other people do other things, and I do other things. Kind of like the uh, in the beast wild in the wildcat multi spread offense playbook that I've got with the squad gang formation with the bunch things that I've been playing with there. So let's go to let's see uh, we're at one fifty six. Go to one fifty eight. Oh, here's the fat power leads. This stuff is just crazy. And a lot of people are like oh you split open those and yeah we do and a lot of teams will not adjust. Uh, if they start adjusting, you just go back to more of a traditional uh, box and don't split, which I call stealth, which you can basically run this stuff and not show people where the gap is if you want to do that. Of course, you've got counters out of that and passes too when they start doing that. Uh, and you can see video out there on counters that I've caught teams in where they're stacking on me. So here's the pie formation. And a lot of times my two back will overshift over in front of the over behind the four a little deep. Uh, so, you know, I think this particular play is is like one of my better videos out on YouTube. For whatever reason, a lot of people love this play. So you got that. Uh, let's see, 164. Oh, I'm supposed to go to 165. So here are all the power plays there. And then I got 176. Let's see. Here's the trig, the counter toss sweep, and let's see. Uh, and then the offset I there, which is the angle. This this play we put in because somebody was running it against us. This crack motion. Uh, it took us like a quarter to figure it out. Great play. I love the offset eye versus the uh, spy or the regular traditional eye uh, because I was a fullback in high school and I couldn't get out to the edge uh, uh, except from the offset eye. So I like it there. Uh, plus, you can kind of do some uh, wing T kind of things uh, or T formation kind of things with the offset uh, with sweeps the other way by like moving your two back to four or four to two. So there's a lot of crazy little things you can do there uh, that I like to do with different packages. Let's see, uh, 190. So here's the double wing. Uh, this is my sp spready kind of double wing. I, it's wider than and not so tight. Uh, so it's really a combination of this Del Wiener spin and the traditional double wing and kind of all mixed up in there. Uh, for in really kind of toned down for youth football because we're in a double tight versus kind of a a slot or a spread formation there. Uh, let's see, two of let's see, one ninety eight. Uh, here's the nickname audible system that I use a lot, which I love and it works out great. The kids love it and it works perfect. Let's see, two of five. You can see the uh source material here um, that I've used over the years. It's really helped me. And then I've got more now. If you see some of the stuff, uh, some of my newer playbooks, you can check the resources there. Let's go to 2010. Oh, so yeah. So here's the four uh, kind of beast tight base plays that any offense could put in. Uh, and then uh 
The only other thing is maybe an audible, audible goofy, which is you run it to the backside guard or tricky or easy or silly. And that just tells the uh, beast back uh, to, if you call that audible, he can run to those lanes on the backside. Uh, so it always set up the pop pass. We call it Popeye. Always set that up as an audible from here. Uh, and you can go uh, overloaded line, which I call big or even kind of thing. So there's that. And let's see what we got here. Um, yeah, I think that's it, actually. So that's kind of the thumb through and walk through of my Power Wing Beast Offense U Football Playbook uh, by me, Coach Parker, over at CoachParker.org. Uh, it's, it served a lot of folks well. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the walkthrough and saw more of what's in the playbook, more so than just, uh, the beast offense. It's a multiple offensive system. You can grow with your team from young to old, ex rookies to experience. And then if you get the Wildcat book, which is kind of a, a, a second book to this Power Wing Beast offense, you really have a whole plethora of plays. I think there's 60 plays here and 100 plays over there. So these two, those two books together at about 150 youth football plays that I'm sure you can pick 24, uh, a core 24 out of and run any uh, youth program to championship level games. Uh, so, so yeah. So if you like the video, please subscribe and like down below. Please leave me a comment if you have bought the book and you like it, or if you've just taken some of the material from the website and you run the beast and uh, you know it works, let me know down there. We'd love to hear from you. Love to talk about the beast. Contact me anytime. Again, this is Coach Parker with CoachParker.org. Please subscribe. Head over to Coach Parker for some more info. And right now, this book is I think still $19.99, and I still have about 25 copies of the hard copy if you'd like one of those. So, yeah, I think we're just about done because we're reaching uh, 30 minutes. Sorry for being so long-winded. Hey, everybody, stay safe, and remember to play for fun. Why? Because winning is funner. Thanks a lot, guys. See you next time. Ciao.